Dude, if you ult at this guy right now, he is actually dead, like, ironically. You have fucking Q upgrade. Yeah. If you just R, W, Q, he's just dead. You proc your passive and Q isolated here, he's dead. And I needed to do that more. Alright. Um, so, no, I wanted to watch the Kaisa game. Um, the 30 to 10 one, because, I mean, you were obviously really strong in this game. And, I mean, you and your team should win. And you still lost it. Um, and I watched, like, the first, like, five minutes of the game. And already I think there's stuff you can do different in lane. And you just shouldn't, like, you shouldn't be able to lose games like this. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I felt uh, games like these, like, I feel like they happen so much more often than uh, they should. Like, yeah. Yeah, where it's, like, I, I press tab and it's, like, this is unlosable and somehow we do. And I'm like, wow. Okay. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is actually on you when you're an AD carry, especially an ADC like Kai'Sa. Um, because Kai'Sa's problem as a champion is mainly laning phase, in my opinion. She used to be really strong in lane, but these days there's a lot uh, better champions for laning phase, like Varus, fucking Kalista, you know? Um, so she doesn't end up actually winning at that much in lane, but she's obviously really strong once you get to like mid game and you get items and you can like do good assassinations on enemy backline and stuff, right? Which a lot of ADCs can't do. So if you're winning as Kaiso, you should be like really winning, you know? Yeah. Because you have opportunities to take fights that other ADCs cannot. Um, like if you're fed as a champion, like let's say Jinx or something, like you click forward, the enemy clicks backward, and you don't really win. Like sure, you'll get push and maybe you'll get a dragon, but you're not forcing a fight as Jinx, right? But if you're playing Kaiso, you can force things and do really crazy things. And I feel like you weren't really doing what was necessary in order to win that game. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay. I mean, for your runes, um, I assume that every time you're going lethal tempo, you're going, like, similar things. But um, here, like, you're going free boots, which I think is good. Um, Kai'Sa is a champion where you do not want to, like, rush Berserker Greaves. Uh, if you are playing something like, let's say, Vayne or Kog'Ma, then... Rushing Berserkers might actually be a good thing, you know? Yeah. Because you just want the movement speed more, and you really want attack speed. Your champion just wants swords, and just AD, and just get Q upgrade. So that's why free boots is good on Kai'Sa. The thing that's not as good, though, is that yeah, if you look at your other rune, like this one, for example, versus Biscuits, like Kai'Sa should want to fight a lot, and be ready to fight. So in my opinion, it's one of the ADCs that actually like Biscuits. I also think that this champion is not so reliant on having flash up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like in lane you should be fighting and like looking for all ins. Um yeah, that's like uh, so uh up until like before, I don't know, a few days ago like a week ago, I would go um presence of mind and biscuits and then I I saw like some Kaisa build or like guide or whatever that was like Kaisa doesn't need mana. And this is like their. That's just not they, true though. Like trial. if you hit yeah. somebody with W in lane, for example, it deals so much fucking damage, and you yeah. kind of like, unless like the only time you don't want to poke with W is if enemy has like shield champs and they're just gonna shield it, or if you have like a freeze and you're guaranteed to all in, then maybe you would keep W for the all in. But you can W a lot, and you wanna use your Q to get push in lanes, like. The one of the f uh, few ways that Kaisa can actually get push in her lane and win is by spamming Q on the wave. Because yeah. without spamming Q, you don't actually have like good um, interaction with wave clear. Like you don't have Tristana's E passive, you don't have Vayne's tumble, for example. You don't have Varus passive when you kill a creep, you get attack speed. You don't have these things. You don't have Seri that can just fucking sap the wave and then Q every fucking half a second. You know. Um, yeah. You don't have these things, but you do have a Q that can help you wave clear. And so I think Kaiser uses quite a bit of mana. Um, and yeah, like, even just your spells, they have pretty high mana costs, no? Yeah, and I mean, that's like, since I started going to the stream page, I felt like there were times where I was like, dang, I wish I had just a bit more mana here. Like, maybe I'd yeah. kill, but I wasn't sure if, like, I'm just using my abilities too much, or if, like, that's actually... Like, it's correct that I should need more mana, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I, I just think, like, the idea of mana management is something that, like, a lot of people, like, will mention. But in my opinion, it's, like, 
having to manage your mana um, is pretty troll on most champs. You know, like, because f- I-, I have coached some Estrel players and they would say like, oh, but if I manage my mana better, I don't need biscuits. And it's like, bro, you're playing Estrel. If you have to manage your mana as Ezreal, there's a problem, right? Like, yeah. like I'm sure maybe you wasted one W or something, but at the end of the day, Kai'Sa is an opportunistic champion that you want to be able to fight whenever a fight occurs, right? Yeah. So if you ever have to like sit out on the bench and not join a team fight because you're Oom, that's a problem. And you can't just use less Qs on the wave. Your champion doesn't clear a wave without using Q and E. You know. So you have to use abilities. You're playing Navori, so you're gonna spam abilities, right? So not having any sort of mana refund, I think, is just unplayable. Yeah. So yeah. Um, in terms of like build, like, do you think am I? I mean, how bad am I trolling that I like just play AD Kaisa? Like, I I tried the Eclipse build uh, for like five or six games, and like obviously. I don't think I'm in any way like capable of determining if a build is good or not, but I did not have success with it. So like I've just been playing AD Kaisa because it's like the playstyle I practice the most. But I know there's also like the LS AP build that I've not played at all. But like that feels like almost like I don't know. I have like a weird thing where it's like I don't want to like abuse a broken build. You know, like I well, don't, I don't know. I mean, there's no such thing as that unless an item is bugged or something. Like it's yeah. not like it's it's not like Ellis's build on Kaisa is some cheat code that's gonna auto win you games. Like yeah, that build yeah. is extremely weak in early game compared to Eclipse. That I that build spikes really really hard at free items, and then you become really strong. Having a build that spikes in late game does not mean you're abusing anything. Because let's yeah. say let's say you're playing early game poorly, right? Then you would insta lose every game with that build. Because yeah. you're probably just lost before you get your items. So you still have to play the game good. There's no such thing as you're abusing an, a fucking item build. Um, when you still have to play the game good to win it. You know? Um, yeah. When it comes to only playing AD Kai'Sa. Yeah, I do think that's troll. Because one of the strengths of playing something like Kai'Sa or Varus. Is that yeah. they have both type of builds, right? Um, mm-hmm. But it also isn't just about your items. It's also rune page. I do think that some games Halo Blades on Kai'Sa is really good and it's necessary in some lanes because there are some lanes where you will have really long fights like here, Kogma Braum, right? With Melio. You guys are not bursting this game. Like, this game, you're going to do long fights both inside of laning phase and outside of laning phase. Like, Braum is naturally going to make people tanky. Your teammates do not deal particularly much damage, right? Considering you have a Melio and a Lilia, it's not like you have a Carfus with a fucking uh, one-shot mid laner like Vega or something or a Zed, and then you have Talon top lane, right? It's going to be pretty long fights here, right? Brewster have enemy team. So tempo is both good for your lane here, but it's also good for your scaling. And then you're going to be in matchups like this, where you're against double ADC bot lane. And then Tempo will basically almost never be good in the lane. But then you have a Seraphine. So I think Tempo is still fine. You're not going to make anything happen in lane, really, realistically, with a Seraphine, right? Yeah. But if you were now to play like Kai'Sa Blitzcrank or Kai'Sa Pike, I think those supports would be a lot more happier if you had Halo Blades. Don't you think so? Yeah, that makes sense. As like the Pike and Blitzcrank, they need that if their hook lands that you kill the person right right so if you're gonna attack slow then they're not gonna die right and the same kind of goes for this type of lanes where it's just like in this matchup halo blades is always going to be better but then you have to just judge how much am i gonna like lose out on by not having uh, lethal tempo right because of course when you then look at their top side we're back at, like, the fights are going to be pretty long, right? Like, of course, they're not tanks, but they're bruiser champions, and Yon is going to, like, reset the fights with his E, Echo's going to ult away, the fight's going to reset, and then having the lethal tempo stacks is nice, and you don't have to have Halo Blades to win this matchup, as Twitch is not so strong in lane. He's, like, fine, but it's not, like, OP or something, right? Right. But it's just mainly, if they have a really strong lane, and you have like an all-in support. I do think Halo Blades is needed to win some of these matchups. Like this type of thing here, I think you're completely trolling going lethal tempo. You have Camille support. Again, the only way she can be useful is if you guys can all-in, right? And they have Caitlyn Nux, which are champions that you can one-shot. And then you're going lethal tempo. It's just counterproductive. Yeah. Right? Like, and then you look at their team, 
it's not like you can't play the game with Halo Blades here. Like, of course, it's ideal to have Tempo versus Vi and the Aatrox, but it's playable. It's not like you're against this Scion here. Right. Right? So that's kind of, like, my read on, like, Halo Blades versus Tempo. It's just, like, Halo Blades always kind of, for most games, going to be better for my lane. Um, it just depends what kind of support I have, how much can I get out of lane, and then how much am I going to hate my life having Halo Blades later in the game. Um, because Halo Blades is rarely going to be good, um, in, like, mid-game, late-game. They're going to have to have, like, full squishy team for it to be good, right? Yeah. But in these super aggressive matchups, it's going to do a lot for your lane. Um, and Kai'Sa is a champion where winning lane is pretty important. I mean, before the game starts, what's important to me is just to have a clear idea of your lane and how jungle interacts with it. Like, both junglers are very similar. They both kind of want to, like, just gank and snowball, you know? They're not really going to play a passive game. So with that in mind, just you have to pay attention to where they're starting and where they're more likely to go. Because if you look at Viego's side, he has a Scion top. Doesn't really make sense to go top, right? Yeah. Scion is not going to carry the game. He has a Smolder. He should play with the mindset that Smolder is the most OP champion in the game. So he should want Smolder to have a good game, right? Yeah. So ideally for him, Viego puffs down and may just protect Smolder. So I would expect a lot of fighting bots, because I also want to fight and make sure that Smolder doesn't just scale for free. So with that in mind, Viego can easily start Raptors and just puff down and become, like, go bot lane already at, like, 230. You can already start considering ganking bot and be here just really quickly. So with that in mind, if you win uh, one, like if you win 2v2 level 1, walking like this, if we are expecting an early gank, is pretty bad, because if I walk like this and I can ward, then that's pretty good. Mm. as that ward will last for the whole period of the first three waves. So if I end up winning level 1 and I build a slow push, I can crash third wave, then my ward expires, my support can place a new one, right? Or I can play safe until my next ward and stuff like this. And I have more options, because right now, if I just click into lane, I might end up laning with no vision. Right? Yeah. Or I might have to ward at a later time where I might face check the Viego, or I might make my ward obvious, which is also bad, because then he doesn't waste time, right? I want him to not know I'm warding. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thing here is, like, you're already kind of griefing, because, like I said before, um, you win versus smaller in trades, but, of course, you want to queue the creeps, because you want to get them, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, this guy doesn't have 25 stacks, so his queue is single target. There's no splash, no AoE. I don't know if you've played smaller yet, but... Yeah, this guy yeah. is just going to queue one creep, right? Right, yeah. So, your advantage here as ADC, now Smolder has a choice to make. Because now you click forward, Smolder has to choose, hmm, do I farm this and take auto attack, or do I hit the Kai'Sa but then I lose gold? Isn't both win-win? Worst case for you, you both deal the same amount of damage per auto attack to each other, but he loses gold, right? Yeah. So anybody with a brain is going to let you auto them and just farm the minion. Right? Nobody in their right mind is going to drop 21 gold to deal 50 damage. It's yeah. useless, right? So, your advantage is you have wave clear. So, you queue this, it's fine. But walk up and protect your creeps. What what bad thing will happen to you if you would be here now? And you would keep clicking into smaller and hit him. Because look, your cursor. You're not playing the game. Look. You queue and you click back. You should click forward. Here, we could look to auto him or Zack. What are you scared of? You could also Q the melees in melee range, and then you could maybe splash a Q onto this guy and also auto him. Because you don't need to be where you are. You're just in a complete wrong mindset. And your cursor tells the whole story. Because you auto this, click to the side, which is wrong, Q this, click backwards, which is wrong. We should send here now. Yeah. Then the only thing you could argue is that this guy could W you, but this guy has fleet, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he has fleet. So, yeah. so if he has fleet, then it's very unlikely he skills W level 1. Um, in the past, people would do like Comet and uh, like Comet, Doran's Ring, 3 points W. Um, then you could argue if I send here and he sneezes on me, then I take poke and he gets the CS. Yeah, that's bad, but I'm always expecting this guy to have Q, you know? Mm -hmm. 
And it's not like the W is a guaranteed hit. You can see him do the animation. You can dodge it. But it is a fair argument if he's playing Mage Smolder. That standing here is bad. But he's playing ADC Smolder. That should be your mindset. Um, and if he does skill W here, it doesn't deal that much damage because he has no Scorch and no Comet. So. Yeah, it's just bad spacing. You should easily auto him or sack here. Yeah. I mean, now, here, um, at this point, I would let this guy knock me up. Because if he uses every spell here, it doesn't do anything for them. They're just on cooldown, then you can just easier dive this guy. Right. Because so, here you're like trying to space it. But in my opinion, you should just let him combo you. Because the thing is, right now, you can still dive this guy. It's just one of you might die. Which is fine. Don't you think it's good? Let's say Smaller gets a kill here. But oh, Smaller yeah. dies. He loses the game is still so fucking GG. Yeah. yeah. So when you're doing this, it's like so troll. You should just stand here and tank the fucking thing. Let him do the jump on you. Because, okay, let's say he Qs you now and then E's on top of you. You're like this HP probably, right? Yeah. So why can't Tom Kench just fucking auto this guy? Afterwards? And then Smolder like flashes somewhere and you just W flash on him or something and then... Smolder just dies and maybe Tom Kench dies, but it's fine. As long as it's not a two for one, it's fine. If Smolder gets double kill here, yeah, it's pretty fucking bad. But that never fucking happens. How can that happen? Right? It can't happen. Because like there, there's no there's no voice chat in League. So your communication has to be with pings and stuff. You're not communicating anything. Look. Yeah. I would that. spam ping go 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 right now. I would pop my ghost right now. I'd pop my ghost and I would signal to fucking hit this guy. Yeah. Tom Kench is mind blown right now what you're doing. Yeah. Tom Kench is doubling out because he's like so confused because you're not giving any direction. Tom Kench doesn't want to fucking flash auto attack this smolder right now or do anything when you're standing here. Right? You're not showing any confidence. Yeah. So this is good. Tom is smurfing right now, stopping them from crashing. Here, you should just fight no matter what. Doesn't matter if Vega is here, you should just take the fight. This doesn't matter, you should fight always. You have Echo and Volibear coming. So here you're playing really fucking good. Here you're trolling. So never mind, you're not playing good. Again, you're not using the information on the map. Look, your mid laner just got a timer, right? And you have Kraken yeah. in base. What advantage do they have over you here? What makes you click back? Mm. They have a 10 HP smolder, right? You have item lead. You are the same level as an AD carry. You're the same level as enemy jungler. Right? This shouldn't really be the case, right? Yeah. So Viego is also useless. So you are so strong, higher level than their bot lane. You have item lead. You have flash up. You have ulti up. Why would you click back? Uh, I don't know. I feel like... I don't know, I'm just like scared when I'm the one taking damage, which feels like lame, like, I don't know. Yeah, but like the thing is, like if you are scared now, they're just going to run away. You want them to think, oh my god, we can go on Kai'Sa. You want right. Viego to think right now, oh, I just got Tom Kench reset. I'm going to fucking try Tom Kench for the first time and press W here and try to kill Kai'Sa. Yeah. And then you're just either going to, one, flash it, or two, R to sack and dodge it. Yeah. But the thing is, you want to keep clicking forward... Because then, one, if they keep clicking backwards, you'll keep hitting them, because you're chasing them. Or two, they go on you thinking you are griefing, but aha, uh -huh, we have Echo and Volibear coming, which is the whole idea. Yeah, true. So you need a plan. Your plan is clearly shit, because your plan is not my plan. Because I'm walking back thinking I'm the fucking king of the world, right? Like, I'm the strongest guy in the game, and I have backup. Right? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking right now. So if you were thinking that, well then, I don't know why you're playing the way you are. So you're clearly not thinking that. Yeah. You're making your Volibear have to flash ult and be the playmaker. I want you to see where Volibear was when this fight started. He is behind the tribush and somehow he's the one engaging this. Yeah. Does that make any sense? So it's like, a lot of ADCs has this problem, because ADCs has the idea that, oh, it's my jungler's job to gank, and my jungler's job to engage, and my mid's job to flank, and my mid's job to engage, and they are the CC, they are the engage. 
you have engaged by altoing them here. Yeah. All you need to do now is keep stacking up Kraken Slayer and Lethal Tempo and somebody will die. But by altoing the minion and running away, you're now de not dealing damage. Yeah. I missed so many. Now. And you're like losing chances to stack Lethal Tempo and stuff. You just keep running away, like this click is also bad. Now here you can ulti in. But you're so AFK. You can ulti in still. Bro! Bro! Hello? What the fuck? Right? <laughs> yeah. Why do you ult now? Because now you're thinking, oh, I can kill him. But you're not thinking, how do we kill them? You shouldn't care if you or Volubear gets a kill. You should make sure that Tom Kench does not die for nothing. Because yeah. Tom Kench is smurfing so fucking hard right now. Because you know what Tom is thinking? He's thinking, I have Echo coming, Volubear coming, Kaiser coming. So I should not be allowed to die for free. That's what he's thinking. Which is correct. They should never be allowed to kill him and get away here. When you have the whole squad coming. So you need to make up for it. Dude, if you ult at this guy right now, he is actually dead, like, ironically. You have fucking Q upgrade. Yeah. If you just R W Q, he's just dead. You proc your passive and Q isolated here, he's dead. And I need you to do that more. Instead of being like so unsure about whether or not you kill him. It's the only way to learn is to ult him now and then you will learn your damage. Yeah. I don't play Kai'Sa and I know right now if you R W this guy and you Q and you auto attack him once, he's dead. 100% he's dead every time. But you just shouldn't care if he dies or not. If he's now 1 HP... Then GG, he will lose the next wave and I'll push and I'll get tempo again and I'll get Krugs and I'll do whatever. Yeah. My ulti is not something super OP I need to keep. Yeah, no. That's and true. if he has flash up now or whatever, or and that's the reason, then you shouldn't care either. If I ult on him and he flashes, then that's also fucking good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And if your argument is, oh, I don't know where Sack is, well, one, that's not true. But then if that's the argument, you shouldn't walk up in the first place. You know? Yeah. But like you know everything. Veo is dead and you see Sack, like it makes no sense. Also at this point I would really want to like start playing the game. If I get bot turret here and I have Q upgrade, I don't want to be bot in the first place. Especially not if my mid laner is Echo. Echo would love to play side lane. Right? Yeah. Echo has mobility, he has solo threat, he has uh, jungle camp clear abilities, he has TP. I am fed as fuck as an AD carry. I kind of want to be in the center of the map because I don't have teleport. And I want to be able to join to every fight. So Kai'Sa is pretty good at side laning compared to things like Varus and stuff. Because you also have mobility. But it doesn't mean you're a good side laner compared to Echo. Um, if you have like a Seraph mid lane, right? Then sure, Kai'Sa can play side and it can actually be like a good thing maybe. Um, but it makes no sense here that you end up being the one bot lane. So if you want to go mid here, you should. I don't see why you wouldn't. Look now, imagine this, right? Imagine here, you recall, and you're pinging now, you're going mid. And Echo gives you this wave. Echo just goes bot here. He'll get the same wave, but then he just goes bot. Wave will walk up and push. You will catch the wave, and now you have correct lane assignments. You'll be mid, and you can either lane 1v1, or you can lane 1v2 with Tom with you. Tom can roam more freely. Now, if you go bot, the problem is, if Tom now roams, then you are alone on bot, making you more vulnerable. That doesn't mean that you'll die, you just can't play as aggressive as you could if you were mid lane. And if your team fights topside now, which they should, there's Herald. Then your Echo is fucking grouping with TP on Herald because he was mid lane. When he could be bot with TP and you and Tom is here. Right? Yeah. It's so much better. Your mid has TP up and you got bot turret. I mean, you didn't get yeah. bot turret yet, but it's 10 HP. But why are you going bot for the bot turret when Herald is up and your mid has TP? Just let your Echo... Go bot lane with TP, and then he will get the bot turret, but you will get Herald, and if enemy team fights Herald, your Echo can TP, right? And I understand it's yeah. solo queue, and your team won't always listen, but you aren't even thinking about it, that's the problem. Because if now, if you're just thinking, okay, I'm recalling, Herald is up, my mid has TP. I'm pinging to go mid now, and then your Echo ignores your pings, you see he's staying mid. Then you can just go bot, I'm fine with that. Because at the end of the day, you need to farm minions, so if your mid is taking your mid wave and refusing to swap... Then of course you'll go bot and farm. But you aren't even thinking about it or trying to make the right lane assignments happen. 
So of course you can't snowball as an AD carry when you are away from the action. The, the fight is happening top and you can say, oh, my team should play around me. No, they should not because there's a Herald. Why the fuck should your team be bot right now? I would blue trinket over here. You never know what your teammates will do with their vision. There's no point to hold blue trinket here. You see this guy's coming? Sure. But we don't know if he's standing here queuing the whole fucking choke. We don't know if he's here queuing the whole fucking choke. Right? Yeah. So just use your blue trinket. Because if you don't, you guys might just end up three people running into sign queue. <laughs> okay, Vega is completely boosted. You should have gotten one shot there. Because the thing here in this fight, in my opinion, when you see Viegos behind you, you must click downwards. Okay? Every time this happens, if there's a Drake fight and there's a guy coming from here, you want the fight to go like this. Yeah. You don't ever want the fight to go like this. Okay? So when mm -hmm. you're doing this... Look, is this a good way to click? No. No. Because I should end up here, right? Yeah. And then I should end up here. And then I should either end up over there or over here. I cannot expect to escape here. Because, yes, you ended up doing it. That's just because Viego is mega boosted. Right? Yeah. If he now just hits W on you, you're just dead. He just taps W here, you're just dead. So it's like, just like the recall thing, like, sure, this ended up being fucking great. That's just because he's just mega boosted. You know? Yeah. So... After you win this fight, first thing you think is, now what? Can we end the game? No. Can we Nash? Okay, maybe. But then your teammates run away, so now you can't Nash. So then nothing else matters. Because you after you win this fight, you either get to end the game, or you get Nash. Nothing else fucking matters. So look where your wave are, right? If you're thinking, can I end the game? You will look where your wave is, right? You'll see right. this. Then nothing matters. You're not hitting this tower if your wave is here. Yeah. So then you just think resources, because now we're playing for the next fight. Because the game will continue now, right? Yeah. So you just take this, then you go full clear their jungle towards top wave, and you get more resources. If if your Tom Kench dies here because he walks up and gets poked by Hui, it's not your fault. Why would Tom be here in the first place when our wave is here? Yeah. So you shouldn't be like, oh, but if I go top and my team kills himself, yeah, okay, but then they're just dying for no reason. Yeah. And right? if I back off, they probably back off too. Yeah, I mean, I would hope so if you ping them back and you go top. Yeah. It's just nonsense to stay here and babysit them. There's nothing going on. The only thing going on is Echo's hitting bot turret. If they go all bot lane to deal with Echo and you are here, then you get top turret then. Right? Spread your pressure and get resources. Wait, can we can we watch that fight? This one? The Baron yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, I don't like here in my mind, I'm thinking like Smolder is so strong. Like we have to assassinate him somehow. Like, I don't know how to, like, join the fight here. Like, I mean, in my opinion, I don't think you should think about that too much. Because it's true. But look where Smolder is. Yeah. So you should just ult on sack and play front to back. Mm. And hope that with sack getting one-shotted and stuff, you guys can progress afterwards. I see. Because if you now hold your spells, look where Smolder is. Right. Like, he's out of the fight, but then I'm holding everything. So it's yes. I'm out of the fight, too. So it's like, what's the point? And your teammates have used... What they are like meant to like engage onto with. Yeah. See, your Volver is here. How can he get smaller? So, in yeah, my opinion, it's much better you just yeah. ult onto Sack and you just play front to back, start stacking up your lethal tempo, then you hit Viego and you start killing people. And then maybe you can flash on smaller with the Volver or whatever after. Here, you're just completely AFK. Yeah. And also, like, smaller is like full tank. I don't even think you can kill smaller if you get on him right now. If it's just you. Yeah. Look, you're doing completely nothing. You could hit Viego this whole time. But like, yeah, you're right. The smolder is OP and stuff. But like, you need to think, how do we kill him? It's going to be like an Echo engage into Volibear and stuff. Right. But if they used all of that, then... Yeah, and Echo isn't even there. Fight. So it's just not an angle to look at smolder. Yeah. So it's either we just recall or we just kill him front to back. Here, Sack gets one-shotted. If you now jump on him now, then he's inside right. dead, and then you're hitting Vago, you're hitting Vago, you're hitting Vago. Auto, 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 you'd have E again right now. And then you yeah. can look on Smolder here on the side, if there's an angle. Mm. But here you're playing as if you're like uh, Shaco, ready to Q on Smolder. Yeah. But you can't get Smolder yourself, so you should just play your game, instead of sitting on the side like this. If you can kill Smolder yourself, because you're like AP Kaisa, then how you're playing here makes sense. 
because you would just be Wing and waiting for a W to hit and then RW one shot smaller. That makes sense. But since you cannot one shot smaller yourself, you should play like an AD carry and wait for your Echo and stuff to actually find the angle or you to find an angle with like a sneaky E or something. You know? Yeah. That makes sense. But your idea is right. Smolder has to die. He is mega OP right now. So like stuff like this is good. But this you could have done while doing like a front to back fight. But like yeah. you doing this is very good. You dying one for one here is worth it. It's worth as fuck. Smolder out values you so hard right now. But yeah, I'm not gonna really think about the game at this point because right. the game's just so shit right now and I want your main takeaway to just be like how you could snowball more in early and just yeah. play the game better and like actually win the game. Because a lot of the things you did isn't like winning you the game. You going bot when Herald is up there, that's not winning you the game. You going mid and putting Echo bot with TP, that's gonna win you the game. Because that's gonna give you Herald early and let you look for more fights, snowball the map more, right? Them going four people for Darius, you looking for either Nash or top inib and the uh, top turrets and mid inib, that's gonna win you the game.